Hey, it's Glenn with the Toy Temple. So, a long time ago, and actually the whole start of the Toy Temple kind of started with this guy. I picked him up at Meyer. Actually, my wife, Mrs. Toy Temple, picked it up at Meyer. And as you may well know, this thing used to be yellow, not gold. Uh, and that was a big problem for me. So what I did was I took a paint marker and I'm not good with customs. I'm not a painter. I don't have the talent or the skill, but this was really easy. And it made a so-so figure better, much better. Painted the, uh, the staff, the power staff, painted the armor, painted the shoulder blades, the belt. This figure needed to be painted right out of the gate. Bandai dropped the ball, and unfortunately, it was up to the consumer to fill in the blanks, literally, like a paint by numbers. And uh, yeah, it's sad that that has to happen in, uh, in 2018, but you know what? He looks good. I'll give them the benefit of the, of the doubt, because you know what? Hasbro's gonna come in, and they're gonna clean house with all the toys, and it's gonna be amazing. The articulation on this guy isn't bad, it's just like the ankles are loose, so it makes them hard to stand up. The staff is nice. You'll see that there's like little yellow spots on it, and that's because the paint marker couldn't fit in there. Uh, back to articulation, he does have ab crunch, which is nice. The armor here splits off, so you can see like the inside, and you can see maybe, did I paint it all? That'd be good. Maybe I painted it. Aren't I, aren't I great? Very poseable figure. It's just unfortunately, he doesn't have the ankles to support the posing. So you'd need like a little stand to put him into really anything too dynamic. You know, he's got a thigh swivel, which is really loose. Like, look at that, I'm like barely even touching that. The arms feel okay. He can't go all the way up just due to the armor, which is, you know, forgivable. You gotta have the armor. They at least included that. No paint, but they did include it, and it, it is really detailed. You can see the, uh, the lines and indentations there, and I'm glad they did that. And on the yellow version, you just can't see it. It just blends right in. It just looks like a big hunk of uncooked macaroni. It's awful. Figure on the back looks good. I did uh, try to paint as much as I could. I don't think I did too bad, especially for a first time with an action figure and a paint pen. I did mess up the staff a little bit at the tip there. I don't even know how I did that. There's no. Uh, there's no reason for, to put gold paint on the red, but I did. And you know what? This is just a, uh, a perfect monument to why Bandai doesn't have the license anymore. They dropped the ball and apparently, officially, they, they went on record as saying, you know what? There's differences between what you saw at you know, the toy fairs and what you get. And I find that to be a little disrespectful to the consumer's intelligence, because it's like, well, you just sold us a false bill of goods, and you tried to sell us a not-so-gold Ranger at the exact same price point as everything else. Because it's a leg it's the legacy collection, is what this falls under. And let me let me go grab a uh, let me go grab some other figures. Can you imagine if those were painted the same color? as the as the gold ranger was originally i don't think that would fly i don't think people would have bought legacy supported it and i think bandai would have lost the license probably a little sooner but ultimately um if you're not up for customizing i think it's a hard pass and without the gold paint it's it's just ugly it's really ugly but if you're up for spending a little bit 
of time and money to dress it up and you were a big fan of Power Ranger Zeo, I say give it a shot. It's worth it. So that is the Gold Ranger. If you like this video, subscribe, like it, share it. We're trying to hit that 100 subscribers mark. And remember, you're never too old to enjoy the things you love. Yeah, that's fine.